The original 6 volt generator on the Model T needs to be set to produce the desired output current to charge the battery and power the lights. It's a mechanical adjustment and holds a set current for a given engine RPM, but each owner needs to choose the current set point for their own car given their typical use. The goal is to have sufficient current to charge the battery and power the lights without overcharging the battery. Sounds simple enough, but what set point do you choose? It becomes a compromise between driving style, battery charge rate, lighting power consumption, and other factors. From time to time, the generator loses its residual magnetic charge and won't work, even if everything is set properly. The coil needs to be flashed. And how do you run or drive the car without a battery or with a damaged electrical system? We'll cover it all in this, the last video in this three-part series. I'm Steven from Fliver Channel. The original 6-volt generator on the Model T must be manually adjusted to produce the correct charging current. I'm sure you've heard of this process called adjusting the third brush. It's not hard to do and will ensure reliable charging for your battery. The Model T owner's manual says, A charging rate of 10 to 12 amperes is most suitable when the engine is running at a speed equivalent to about 20 miles per hour. That sounds clear enough, but it also states that the third brush can be shifted to meet varying conditions. For instance, a car that is driven only on a short trip would require a higher charging rate than a car which is driven on long runs. But there are more factors that play into this decision as well. Do you typically drive with the lights on or off? What engine speed do you typically drive at? Have you installed LED light bulbs in your car? All of these factors influence the best set point for the third brush. Ever wonder why the only instrument that Henry Ford put in the Model T was an ammeter? Modern cars have many different instruments, but no ammeter. What's with that? The ammeter is the perfect instrument to monitor the safe and effective performance of the DC generator in the Model T, and it is also useful for choosing and adjusting the best third brush setting. This is why one was installed in every Model T that has a generator and a battery. Most experts agree that the best charging current for a fully charged lead-acid 6-volt battery is 2 to 4 amps. If the battery is depleted, then even higher current is required, sometimes as high as 20 amps. But the Model T generator pushes a constant current regardless of the state of charge of the battery, and for the most part, regardless of the loads applied. And regular incandescent headlights can sometimes draw over 8 amps. Are you beginning to see the problem? There is no perfect setting for the generator current. It's a compromise between your battery charging needs, your lighting needs, and protecting the battery from overcharging. You can see that the current to the lights is constant. It's either on or off. The generator current is variable with engine revs, but the set point of the generator is fixed for the chosen engine cruising speed. The trick is to choose a balance that yields a reasonably low charge rate in most situations and doesn't deplete the battery too quickly when you're driving slowly. In my case, with incandescent bulbs, I set the charge rate at my typical cruise speed of about 45 kilometers per hour. That's about 28 miles per hour. And I set it to about 7 amps. That way, when I turn on the lights, the battery is being depleted at only 1 amp and will take many hours to fully deplete. I seldom drive at night, and when I do, only for a few hours at most. Be aware that LED light bulbs will change this balance considerably. They only draw 1 or 2 amps. If I had LED bulbs, I would want to set the cruising charging rate to, say, 3 amps. Setting the third brush on a Model T is straightforward. All you need is a 5 16 wrench. You can get this special Ford wrench, or any 5 16 combination spanner will work. Once you've removed the cover, you can see the nut that retains a rotatable third brush assembly. Loosen this nut, but be careful not to remove it completely.
Once loose, the third brush can be rotated. Move it toward the engine to increase the charging current setting or away from the engine to reduce the charging current. Just move it a small amount and then test by running the car at cruising engine speed and watch the ammeter. When happy with the brush setting, tighten the nut. From time to time, the generator coils will lose their residual magnetic charge. This can happen after prolonged storage, for example. When this happens, even with a properly functioning and adjusted cutout, the generator will not charge, even at higher engine revs. The coils within the generator produce magnetic fields that interact to generate electricity, but the coil relies on a little bit of residual magnetism to get going. If it has lost its residual magnetism, then we need to give it back. With the vehicle master battery switch on and the ignition switch off, briefly short the generator wire to the generator post. You can use a metal plier like the Ford manual shows, or any kind of electrical wire or lead will work too. But keep in mind that this can produce a spark, and it is right beside the carburetor, so take precautions to avoid fire, and be prepared to extinguish a fire if necessary. I pointed out in the generator cutout video that the generator should never be run without a load to avoid voltage runaway and the subsequent catastrophe. There is a way to operate a generator without the load by shorting the generator output, sometimes called earthing the generator or shorting the field. At first blush, this seems like it's going to be a bad idea and short the generator. But the opposite is actually true. By shorting the field coils in this way, they can't build magnetic fields and the generator can't generate. With the generator earthed like this, you can run a car that has a generator without a battery. With a properly adjusted cutout, a properly set third brush, and knowing how to monitor the system using the ammeter, you can get many miles of trouble-free performance from your original 6-volt generator charging system.